Once all devices have been added to the inside location, it is time for you to configure VLANs. For this example, let's create a separate VLAN for guests that wish to access the internet. By default, your total network solution devices will join the management VLAN 1. However, you don't want to expose the management network for guests. If hackers can see the IP address of your infrastructure devices, such as routers, switches and access points, it is easier for them to try a brute force attack. Insight offers you a smart wizard to create VLANs, but before starting, please take note of your router's IP address. The address displayed here resides in the management VLAN 1 and should not be duplicated in the new VLAN. Now click on VLAN network button here on the top and check the only existing network at the moment is management VLAN 1. Now click on the plus symbol to add a new network and start the wizard. In simple steps, you will be able to give the new network a custom name, a description, a simplified VLAN name and a VLAN ID, which is a number to identify that VLAN amongst the others. Let's give it the number 20 for this example. Now under wired settings, you will see each device that has been added into this location and their ports. Select the port on the router that is connected to the switch and assign both of them as trunk ports. A trunk port will allow traffic of multiple VLANs, in this case the management VLAN 1 and the newly created guest's Wi-Fi VLAN 20. On the switch, you can also assign the ports that connect to the access points as trunk ports. This will allow access to multiple VLANs via the same wireless access points. In this moment, we only have VLAN 20 accessible via Wi-Fi, but it's important to configure them with the future in mind. Enable inter-VLAN routing so devices joining this VLAN 20 will be able to reach the internet gateway that resides on VLAN 1. There are advanced settings that we won't touch in this quick demonstration. So on the next step, wireless settings, you can create a new SSID that will allow access to this VLAN. Here you can create a custom name that will be displayed when new devices search for Wi-Fi, select the wireless bands that this Wi-Fi will operate in, and create a new password. Please note that the 6 GHz band supports WPA3 security only, so it is recommended to select a mix of WPA3 and WPA2 to accommodate legacy devices joining that VLAN as well. Skip the captive portal for now and go to the next step. Here you can configure the IP addressing methods of new switches joining this VLAN. If you wish them to acquire an IP address via DHCP, please select this option and click Next to configure the DHCP server. As you start to configure the DHCP, the wizard will ask you to create a gateway IP address for this VLAN 20. This gateway IP address here must be part of the new VLAN 20. So please do not copy that same router's IP address on this field. You can assign a complete different class of IP addresses for your VLAN and it's a common practice to match the third field of the IP address with the VLAN ID for organization. Here you can configure your DHCP scope, selecting the first and last IP addresses that are available for new devices and their lease duration, determining for how long the devices can use that IP address. Finally, click on Next to assign the new VLAN 20 settings, the SSID and DHCP configuration to all devices at once. And voila! Your new VLAN is now configured and the SSID will be displayed on all devices searching for Wi-Fi within range. You can check back on the dashboard summary that two VLANs are operating and it's all fine. Exercise your Insight abilities at insightdemo.netgear.com.